stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Asking Jesus to come into the heart is an important prayer that every believer in Christ must earnestly pray for. Because the heart is supposed to be his dwelling place. And it is only those believers in Christ who have him in his heart, they are married to him. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Those who are joined in my relationship unto the Lord, they have one spirit. Now, Romans 8, 9. Romans 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, those who have not got Christ in dwelling in their heart by his spirit, they are not of Christ. That is, you cannot say they belong to Jesus. Or they cannot say they are Christians yet. Jesus Christ is always willing to come into the hearts of all believers in Christ. If only they will hear his voice as he knocks at the door of their hearts. And believers in Christ can only hear this knocking if they are in a true church where the truth is. Because it is the word of truth that does the knocking at the doors of our hearts. Falsehood, word of God that is corrupted. Enticing words of man wisdom cannot knock at the door of any heart. Only this truth, now they knock at the door of the heart of believers in Christ. They cannot hear this knocking at the doors of their hearts in hallowed churches or in synagogue of Satan. Because the truth is not there that does the knocking. That is why the hearts of most believers in Christ who are in such setups are far from Jesus Christ. Hence, they only honor Jesus with their lips. Matthew 15, verse 8. Matthew 15, verse 8. These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. That is, I am not in their heart, because they have not heard it true way they knock. 
Salvation is far from such people who are in Harlow's setup because they have not received the love of this truth. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10b. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10b. Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They are eternally damned. Because they will not believe the truth, even though they hear the truth. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 12. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 12. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. It's so important. This truth with the knock at the door for us is. But those who are of the truth will hear his voice, which is this truth. Because they are the vessels of the mercy of God, whom God has foreknown and predestined unto eternal life through this truth. God don't know them. So they are be ordained from their mother's womb unto this truth. That's why they eventually find themselves in a preacher where the truth is. John 18, 37c. John 18, 37c. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And those who are of this truth, at God's own appointed time, God will surely draw them unto this truth by bringing them into a true church where the truth is. John 6, 44. John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So no man can come to this truth except those who are the truth that the Father will eventually draw to come to this truth in a true church where the truth is. It will partake of the first res resurrection. And as they hear the word of truth, and they are obeying them, their hearts will gradually begin to experience the cleansing of all the idols within their hearts. And of all the fitness within their soul and spirit. As they obey. Because Jesus Christ cannot come and dwell in the heart. We are another God today. No. He does not share his glory with another God. So you must forever purge your hearts of these other gods, idols. Ezekiel 36, 25. Ezekiel 36, 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That clean water, and I be this too so, where they knock at the door of every heart. And so the doors of their hearts will fully be open for Jesus to come in by spirit when they must have been cleansed of all these idols, of all the fitness of their spirit, as they obey the truth that they are being taught. But rebellion and stubbornness to this truth, now they close the door of the hearts against Jesus from coming in. Why partial obedience We open the door, small? And Jesus Christ cannot force and say through a small opening of the door, no. Cannot come into such heart. Sit and no man, so far I see small opening to enter. That's why Satan enter into the heart of King Saul because of partial obedience. Evil spirit now fell upon him, going to trouble in life. And then I Safira in the Bible, in the early church. Partial obedience to the drawing of little treasure in heaven. Now may Satan enter the heart of the two of them. So only absolute and total obedience to every doctrine when they hear. 
Now you open the, the door wide. When you don't open the door wide for her, by your absolute obedience, you don't come inside. They will begin to have sweet fellowship. Not only with Jesus, but with your father also. And with the Holy Spirit. And it is a sweet thing to have such fellowship with Jesus. When they talk to you, they talk to her. John 14, 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Say, we will come, that is me and my father. And the Holy Spirit will come and abide in you fully now. Because the door of your heart is wide open by your absolute and total obedience to every dirty word they hear. And when Christ is in our heart, his love is shed abroad in our heart by his spirit. And this will make us to love him the more by keeping every dirty of his, no matter how hard that dirty is. Because we don't this our heart. We'll find every dot very easy to obey. As brethren also, we shall love one another. Because it's in our hearts. John 15. John 15. 17 and 12. 17. These things I command you, that you love one another. 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, let's read Amos 1, verse 11. Amos 1, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. This is Edom, or Esau. He said he pursued Jacob with his sword, and he kept his anger forever in his heart towards Jacob. And so, Brethren will not get Jesus for their heart. We will always keep anger against another brother for a very long time. Christ no day inside the heart of such a brother or sister. That person be like Esau. We are trying to analyze the characteristics of those who have Christ in dwelling their hearts. And ego blesses those who be say Christ under their heart. They always show compassion towards other brethren who are in need in the church. Not toward those who are slothful. Go his slothfulness. And not toward those who are under the curse of God because of robbing God of his money. 1 John 3, 17. 1 John 3, 17. But whoso had this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? self centeredness is not of Christ. Any self centered person, Christ knows the heart. And if Christ is in our hearts, we will be Christ doctrine of godliness with contentment. Which in the sight of Jesus is a great gain. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment 
is great gain. Anybody we cry day in hearts, eh? we only be contented. And if Christ dwell in our hearts, we will bear one another's burden, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ. Galatians 6 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Brethren, we will be saying Christ is dwelling in their hearts. We always say, like David said, Psalm 131, 1 to 2. Psalm 131, 1 and 2. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is wind of his mother. My soul is even as a wind child. This is contentment. Any person whose eyes are lofty, they always decide to say in great matters. Things too high for them. So they want to start business. They'll go over one million, two million. The eyes are lofty. Christ never had the inside the heart of such a person. So if Christ indwells your heart, you'll be Christ-like. Your eyes will not be lofty. You know my high things. You not begin to think of things too high for you. Your soul is like a child that is winning from the mother breast. You are contented. A, a sister, a widow. Three thousand ninety starts. And what did they do? A Kamunai, they said. Today, now they pay for her rent. If Christ is your heart, the greater heart desire will be to lay up treasure in heaven. That is, if Christ has come into your heart, it didn't do in your heart. You only desire to do what? To lay up treasure in heaven. Because where your treasure is there, now there your heart is good there. If you are laying treasure in heaven, your heart will be heaven bound. But if you are just laying out treasure here on earth, material things here on earth, your heart will be head bound. Matthew 6, 20 to 21. Matthew 6, 20 to 21. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you are laying up treasure, because it's in your heart in heaven, your affection will be set on things above, where Christ is. You always think of heaven. Colossians 3 2. Colossians 3. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now let those who get Christ in their heart, now go if you obey this. The enemies of the cross of Christ that Paul warned again that we should be careful of them. They don't want to suffer anything for the sake of Christ. Because when you are taking your stand for this truth, you suffer many things. But God is with you. Jesus Christ is with you because he's in you. He will always make a way of escape for you. By and by. But you are not patient with Christ. You go on your own way. And it will bring sorrow, that blessing. Because it's not from Christ. And their God is their belly. Philippians 3, 18 to 19. Philippians 3, 18 to 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. They mind what? Earthly thing because Christ knows the inside them. And they will be destroyed. 
in the long run, eternally. We are talking of those who have Christ in their hearts, their characteristics, the fruit. Those who be say Christ don't enter their heart. Nothing go fit separate them from the love of this truth. Because Christ is the truth. It's inside you already. It's dwelling in you. Romans 8. Romans 8. 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That was the pledge, the vow Paul made with God. Because Christ is inside him. He said nothing will separate him. Christ don't enter me. It's in me. Where do you go and separate me? Is it farming? Say, I don't see chop. Or is it persecution? Is it death? Is it height? Is it any human being? Is it any creature? Is it angel? Even pastors. Angels are messengers of God. They cannot separate from the Lord this truth. And there are ways you always please God. And because there are ways I always please to God, God will now make all their enemies to be at peace with them. Isaiah 11, verse 2. Make we see where the Christ is. Isaiah 11, verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Once Christ enters your heart, he's indwelling in your heart, this spirit must be in you. Knowledge, understanding, cancer, might, fear of the Lord. Because Christ is there. Now, in a divinely ordained marriage, when Christ is inside the heart of the husband, Christ is inside the heart of the wife. First of all, they will have peace with God. They will have peace with one another. They will have peace in their matrimonial home. There will be no strife or bitterness among them in their matrimonial home. There will be no confusion between husband and wife. And no evil work we enter that matrimonial home. Even when they are angry with one another, occasionally, they will not allow the son to set down their anger. They will sort their matter quickly and resolve it. Ephesians 4.26. Ephesians 4.26. 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. But if the wife or the old man don't get Christ inside his heart, there's bound to be war or storm in that matrimonial home. As a result of spiritual incompatibility, that there's no spiritual agreement. Christ the inside one, he not the inside of that one. If Christ is not in your heart, Satan must be in your heart. So that's what I mean by no spiritual agreement. This normally happens actually in a home that is not ordained by God. And they cannot work together. Because God asks in Amos 33, He said, Can two work together except they be agreed? So we can see how important it is for Christ to go and dwell in the hearts. So it's an important prayer that anyone that has come to the knowledge of the truth should always pray, Jesus, come into my heart. Come and occupy my heart. Come and dwell in my heart. So I can be a particle of your divine nature. That I may love you and keep all your doctrine, no matter how it is, come and dwell in my heart. 
He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Now, this truth, now they knock. When you hear the truth, it reveals your spiritual condition to you. All you need to do is to break down and repent. When you repent, you don't cleanse you of one stubborn idea. You don't cleanse you of one other idea. Gradually, the cleansing will continue until it fully comes to your heart. Then it will be easy for you to obey every other adventure. Then it will be easy for you to say, Lord, let your will be done. It will be easy for you to say, Lord, take my life. Let my life be fully concerned with your service. Take my feet, take my silver, my gold, take everything. That's when that all. Now, when Christ don't come fully to your heart, I can easily say that.